Hi guys, welcome back to another episode on Beauty Within. It's your greasy girl, Belle. And you guys know if you've been watching along for some time that I am passionate about drinks because it really is to me like healing from the inside. And we've done about three previous videos highlighting ingredients that we love like matcha, chrysanthemum, honey and turmeric. So I'm really excited about the ingredients that we're going to be talking about today because there are adaptogens, which is everything to do with managing stress, helping you wind down maybe if you're really anxious and you have trouble sleeping there's some cool delicious drinks that we have to help with that but as well as that a lot of the ingredients are also anti-inflammatory and you guys know how much I love anti-inflammatory ingredients so this video is going to be really exciting a lot of the medicine in ancient times revolved around remedies that use mixtures and tonics and herbs and spices as well as roots and flowers to really help the body because food truly is medicine in the best way possible. So today we want to focus on a couple of these herbal plants and you'll also notice that some of these herbs might be familiar to you because they're rebranded a lot of the times as superfoods to draw in all that hype. And I know a lot of these ingredients might seem foreign or they might be confusing to buy yourself. So much like our store where we want to make everything a little bit easier for you guys, we're going to stock a few of these, see if this is something that you guys are interested in. And hopefully if you guys see something that you you enjoy in this video you can just make it along with me and share all your pictures as well and just an important disclaimer all of these ingredients that we mentioned today are for educational purposes and not meant for diagnosing or curing diseases so if you have any food sensitivities allergies or medical conditions or if you're pregnant we obviously encourage you to use your personal judgment and consult with your medical professional just in case <laughs> All right, let's start it off with probably the most magical and exciting, but also simple and delicious one. It's the black goji berry drink. And you'll see that it gets its name obviously because it's black compared to the normal goji berry, which is vibrant red. And it's the rare cousin of the one that you're probably more used to. So ding, we have them both here. You can see the normal one and the black one. Personally, I had never seen this one until very recently. And when we were looking up different recipes, I was like, what? It changes color? But some sources do say that it's a little bit sweeter and maybe a little more potent than the normal red goji berry. So some of the benefits of any type of goji berry is that it has adaptogenic properties that can help to increase your energy levels, your focus, calm the mind, reduce fatigue and stress, and really just improve the quality of sleep. So definitely something for you guys as a night time before you hit the sheets. On top of that, it's really rich in antioxidants and minerals and nutrients like riboflavin, theamine, nicotinic acid, copper, manganese, magnesium, and also selenium. So a lot of these people will go out and find capsules specifically to ingest these nutrients and goji berry contains them all. It's like this powerhouse superfood. So the recipe for this one that we're going to share with you guys is actually a black goji berry lemonade. So what you want to do is get the black goji berries in a jar and kind of like rinse it because you want to get the like dry residue off of it and then just fill it with water let it steep overnight or until the liquid turns this awesome bluish color and the berries get slightly plump like our skin cells when we put on skincare then the next day you want to strain the berries separate it from the liquid and then in a separate bowl I like to just boil some water melt some honey in it so that you know you have a little bit of sweetness with the sour lemonade and then pour that into the blue liquid and then at the end get your lemon and squeeze it into the liquid and you will see it turn pink science people and then you, you know you can always just adjust according to however sweet you want it and you can add some ice cubes in there to make it that iced pink lemonade and you have all the antioxidant properties all the minerals all the nutrients without feeling guilty my friends and we also have a drink for the more common goji berry we're gonna do it with ginger and let's go into some of the origins of goji berry it's native to Asia particularly in the northwest regions of China and the taste is slightly sweet and a little bit sour almost kind of like cranberries when they're dried with uh, 
herbal aftertaste. So the recipe, this one is super easy. I feel like goji berry is one of the most easy ingredients to make a beverage with. What you wanna do is once again, wash the goji berries a little bit, rinse it under cold water, drain it, and then in like a little saucepan or whatever you wanna use, add about three cups of water, wait for it to boil, and then switch off your stove, remove it from the heat. And this is where you wanna add the goji berries, some sliced ginger, and rock sugar, and you wanna stir that all together. And I love rock sugar for goji berries because it's like slightly sweet without overpowering the entire taste of it. And it just works really well with ingredients like ginger that gives you that heat. And you wanna just let this steep for about 10 to 15 minutes, give the rock sugar some time to melt away. And the longer you steep it, there's like no problem with that because the more you do, maximum flavor town. And the cool thing about this one is that you can drink it hot, cold, and it's like super easy. You can even make it in a cup. Just pour some boiling water in there, put a few rock sugar crystals. But if you want to make more, sharing is caring. That's how you do it. Another thing that I want to mention just quickly that includes goji berry that Ro actually gifted to me for Christmas because I wanted it <laughs> is from Moon Juice. And this one is the Beauty Dust and it's the adaptogens for skin. On top of the goji berry, it also includes Shisandra, which is also Omija. And you guys might know the Omija berry from Sioris Mist. It's also got Amla, Ashwagandha, Crushed Pearl, and Ramania. Hmm. Obviously, this one is different to having the actual berry and it's already in a powder form with the other ingredients, which is a great alternative for you guys if you drink like smoothies, if you want to add it into your lattes. This one says it pairs well with like a matcha beverage or even just water and lemonade. And now I think we've spent enough time on the goji berry. Let's move on to the next ingredient, which is honeysuckle. So the drink for this one is honeysuckle and chrysanthemum. Chrysanthemum, you might have realized in my previous video, love it. It's those traditional ancient Chinese herbal drinks that taste so delicious. And these are the dried chrysanthemums here in its whole form. And we also have the chrysanthemum tea from the Chi on our store as well. It looks beautiful. And this one I feel like is the more rustic that you would make like a big batch of them. And like these packaging, don't get put off by it because I've seen this my entire life. This reminds me of childhood. <laughs> so honeysuckle is a plant that's sometimes called the woodbine and it was first recorded to be found in Chinese medicine and it was believed that honeysuckle had a cooling property because as we know in traditional Chinese medicine that every food that we eat, like whether it's fruit, vegetables, they all have a nature to them which can really help to balance things within ourselves like inflammation for example. So this one specifically helps to counteract the heat or the hot toxins in our body. So this is great for people who is actually very heated internally. Some of the benefits that we found is that it, once again, is anti-inflammatory. It's also antimicrobial, antibacterial. And what this means for the body is that it can help with things like internal oxidation and just helping to calm and soothe everything and fighting against inflammation. Overall, these ingredients are all really great as antioxidants to fight against free radical damage, which helps our bodies from aging from the inside. And that's actually really important. Okay, so for the drink, we want to combine honeysuckle, chrysanthemum, and rock sugar again because it pairs well with these floral notes. So first of all, this is what it looks like. It's kind of like these thin leaves. And with a lot of these, you wanna first rinse it again. But with honeysuckle in particular, you wanna rinse it quickly so that the flavors of it don't seep into the water you're rinsing it all away from. So this one again is really simple. You can either make it in your cup with a strainer or you can use a saucepan if you're making a little bit more of it and you want refills. <laughs> and then after you wanna add the chrysanthemum and the honeysuckle, and then you can add the rock sugar to taste. Some people like it sweeter, some people want it a little bit more natural. And you just stir it around and you wanna let it steep for about 15, 30 minutes or just to taste. And you strain the flowers out, pour it into your favorite cup and 
Delicious. This one is probably the most floral and kind of like you're prancing in a field of chrysanthemum and honeysuckle flowers. It just sounds beautiful. And you can enjoy this one hot or cold, depending on whatever climate you're currently in. I always love these calming, soothing teas at night after you know a long day, or even when you're just sitting around, maybe with family, and you want something to sip on. All right. Next up on the menu, we have the Harvest Punch. And this one we found is inspired by the Korean Punch, which uses jujube red dates, an Asian pear, some ginger, some cinnamon. This one I think is a really great one to serve for your family or just anyone over especially this holiday because it's got really warming, really comforting ingredients. It's got pear, it's got the jujube and ginger. So it's just like a blanket and it's delicious. So before we jump into sharing the delectable recipe with you guys, let's look a little bit into the ingredients. First, starting off with jujube dates. Zing! <laughs> Zing! Okay, so those are the dates, if you haven't seen them already. They're also known as the red or the Chinese date, which is native to Southern Asia. And it's a really popular ingredient that you can see they use a lot of, especially in beverages. And it provides this really honey-like and sweet flavor to anything that is kind of brewed in. And traditionally, it was used in Chinese medicine to treat things like insomnia. And it's high in vitamin A, vitamin C, antioxidants, particularly flavonoids, which are like super antioxidants. But it also contains the saponins and the polysaccharides. So it's really just got a lot of the nutrients that we hear a lot about in our skincare, but you know, feeding it internally. On top of that, it's also rich in fiber and helping with your digestion. And that's where the pear, the green pear, which is this one, don't get it mixed up with the green one or the brown one that you normally use. And the taste of it is quite different to me. This one's like crispy and sweet and like, refreshing, also high in like vitamin C, potassium, and helps with things like digestion. So they do say the pear is really great to be eaten in the fall and winter seasons to help with phlegm and coughs because of those nutrients that it contains. But for this recipe, I'm gonna use about 20 pieces of the dried jujubes sliced in half. You can find them whole form or already sliced, and the ones we're gonna use are that, so just cut them in half of their whole and you want to get one of these sweet things a large Asian pear and you just want to cut it up quartered seeded you know much like an apple get your ginger and thinly slice it so that the juices of the ginger seep into the concoction then you gather all those ingredients put it into a pot add your water bring it up to boil and then when it's boiling take it down to simmer and you want to simmer it for around an hour because you really want to let the pear break down so it's you know nice and poached so then after an hour you strain the liquid away from all the dry ingredients well now it's wet ingredients <laughs> and for sweetness you can adjust the levels of honey or whatever sweetener you put in whether it's like rock sugar at the end and drink away friends next we have a turmeric ginger lemon tea with honey. So I know you guys love the turmeric and maple recipe that, you know, I shared in my first video. That's still probably one of my favorites. The only thing I get annoyed with is that turmeric stains every one of my mugs. <laughs> and basically anything that it touches but all in the name of health. Even if you go to places like Joe and the Juice, Dr. Schmood, like they sell booster shots exactly like this and charge you like eight bucks for it. And here you are, my friends, making it yourself. So this one really does depend on your own taste buds as well. I personally am more of like a savory and sweet person rather than like a sour. So sometimes I kind of just omit the lemon, but if you are facing anything like cold, flu, then that vitamin C from the lemon will actually help your body recuperate, restore maybe some of the lack of vitamins that you have during those times. So what are the benefits of turmeric and ginger? Turmeric, as we know, and I have mentioned in our previous videos, it has been around for years and years for its medicinal properties. It's an anti-inflammatory, antibacterial, and is great for warming and heating the body. And the compound curcumin is what gives it all its health benefits. But with turmeric, to help your body really absorb it, you need something that's found in black pepper, which is the pepper 
Catherine. So they always go together hand in hand like best friends. And then ginger is also another really great healing and heating ingredient that's been used for years and years for things like easing nausea, bloating, indigestion. That's why, you know, ginger tea, they always suggest you drink it after like a meal to help with digestion. It soothes the bowels and just gives you this comfort that not many other ingredients can. It also helps to relieve inflammation in the body. So it really works together well with the turmeric because they're both like powerhouse antioxidants. So this one's super easy. You have about one tablespoon or maybe even a little less if you're not used to the flavor of turmeric into your cup. Add a little like of black pepper or if it's like this, and then slice up about an inch of ginger. And if you do want to include the lemon and about two, three cups of water. So you can make a big dose of this that is a little less potent, or you can make just a cup of it and make it really potent. A quarter squeeze of the lemon. And then right at the end, of course, sweeten it with a little drizzle of honey or a lot of honey. Um, I think turmeric and honey really works well for me. I wouldn't add maple into this one. When it's more of a tea, I like honey. Alrighty, moving on to our final drink recipe for today. And I'm really excited because we're gonna talk a little bit about the world of adaptogens. So some of you might be wondering, what is adaptogens? Where has it been all my life? Especially if you're a person who's dealing with a lot of stress or if you're a person who has a hard time kind of controlling anxiety or having trouble sleeping, whatever it is, especially during these times. I think this is definitely one that you want to look into. So put simply, adaptogens are medicinal herbal plants that help the body cope by adapting or modifying its response to stress and fatigue because they really do go hand in hand. For example, there's definitely days where we all feel really burned out, we're not productive, we're highly anxious, we're just feeling troubled or whatever it is, right, that we're thinking about that hovers and haunts our mind and soul. <laughs> and adaptogens in theory can really help to lessen those feelings. But how does it work? So normally when we're good, you know, we're not in this kind of funky state, our bodies are balanced for the most part, our mind is balanced, but life throws us lemons sometimes and it throws off this balance, whether it's the food we eat, the mood we're kind of feeling, or just situations that are just out of our control and we don't know what to do, we feel cornered. These are the times when our bodies will enter fight or flight. Basically, it produces cortisol, the whole body gets inflamed, and and you know, you feel your heart racing and you know, your body is trying to decide what you need to do, whether it's like run away, which is flight or you know, fight. And depending on how severe it is, you can start sweating. You don't know what to do and you're stuck, right? So the cortisol is already kind of like revving up. It's boiling. This is normally when we talk about acne because then it can also signal to the sebaceous glands to produce more oil. Like it triggers a lot of different things. So that's stage one. So after this happens, if the situation is okay, we're slowly starting to deal with it. Our body and mind will enter stage two, which is kind of like a repair mode because it realizes, okay, I might not be getting attacked actually, I don't need to run away. And the body and your mind will start to try and normalize to bring everything back to balance. And this is where adaptogens really help. It's in that stage two, to really help you bring back to equilibrium, back to balance, and kind of assist your body in its natural process to get there. Because if it was the alternative and you're still experiencing prolonged stress, prolonged anxiety, you enter actually stage three, which is things like extreme exhaustion. You're really just crashing. Your body is shutting down. You're probably breaking out. You have like no sleep because you're entering like insomnia and you just can't figure out. Like no one wants to be there. So before, you know, we talk a lot about prevention with skincare so that we don't age any earlier than we need to. The adaptogens also help more for that mental prevention. So now that we know that, the two types of adaptogens that I wanna talk about today are ashwagandha and astragalus. And you may or may not have heard of these and thought they were just some like weird sounding ingredients that you probably never would have to know about, but now you know, now you know. 
So ashwagandha is a medicinal herb that's considered one of the most important herbs in Ayurvedic medicine and it's been used for over like 3,000 years to really help to relieve stress, increase energy levels, improve concentration, especially at a time like this, we definitely need this herb. And what you'll see is often the root and the berries are used to make up the concoction. And fun fact, ashwagandha in Sanskrit actually means smell of the horse. Lol, doesn't that make you want to drink it even more? Because of its unique smell and its ability to increase strength. Stallion. And just a little bit on astragalus, which is also an adaptogen. This is an herb that's mostly found in traditional Chinese medicine. And it's like this long kind of root looking thing. It's also called the huangqi, which is yellow leader because the root is yellow and it's considered one of the most important herbs in traditional Chinese medicine. And if you guys are a fan of the pyongkang yul essence toner that we've talked for years about, that main ingredient is the milk vect root, and the milk vect root is astragalus. <laughs> the worlds collide. So the drink we have for you guys is another one of the moon juice powders. Also, this is not sponsored. I just have it, okay? I'm really curious to try more of these. This is the brain dust adaptogens for focus. So this one contains the ashwagandha, astragalus, maca, and ginkgo as well as lion's mane. And lion's mane is a type of mushroom and mushrooms are also really great adaptogenics. They're also great for hydration if it's an ingredient in your skincare. So the best ingredient really. And this recipe I'm going to call the sleep tonic because nap time. <laughs> so tired. <laughs> so for this one, you're going to need some medjool dates some honey, manuka honey if you have it, a little bit of cinnamon powder, nutmeg, clove, and ashwagandha root powder. So that's the reason why I'm using this one because you can buy like ashwagandha root by itself, but I just feel like this is great. So what you wanna do with these ingredients, we'll leave it all below and we'll probably write an article for you guys so you can reference it. What you wanna do is add all the ingredients and you wanna blend it until it's creamy. And then you wanna just transfer that into a pot and just heat it up so it's nice and warm and then serve it in your favorite cup with a dust of cinnamon powder as garnish. And there you have it, this sweet, sweet, delicious drink that will help you get into that more peaceful state, that more well-rested state. It's not necessarily going to put you to sleep, it's not for that, but really just help you soothe and calm. So guys, that is our video on more drinks for you guys, especially rounding up this year. I think these are great recipes, really easy, because we just want to share these delicious recipes so that we learn more about ingredients and know how our body receives nutrients, vitamins, when in not just skincare, but also when it's ingested. And to make that easier, of course, we are stocking a little bit of it on our store to see if you guys are interested. And please let us know if you try any of these and tag us in your pictures. We really love seeing how many of you enjoyed the turmeric latte in the first video and all of our other ones. So make sure you refer to those previous videos if you want even more recipes. And because we're so close to Christmas, everyone here on our team on Beauty Within wishes you guys the best end of year. Hope you guys are staying positive, you're staying healthy, and you're really taking the time to take care of yourself, whether it's learning about new things like foods and drinks, studying up on your skincare and putting the effort into yourself to better improve. And we're all on that journey together. So thank you guys so much and we'll see you very soon in the next episode. Bye.